Welcome to Discovering. It's not too early to start making your summertime vacation plans. February is travel month here on Discovering. Each week we'll be taking a look at some of the great places to visit right here in our own backyard. Tonight we'll take a look at one of the Upper Peninsula's most visited gems, the Porcupine Mountains. Kick back, put your feet up and relax. It's Monday night and time for Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. The call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan If someone not from here were to ask me to explain the Upper Peninsula, I'd tell them about the freshness of spring, the warm days of summer, the colors of fall, and the hidden beauty in our winters. i tell them about deer camps, hunting, and fishing, and the real reasons we do those things. i tell them about our lakes and streams, big and small, our peaceful forests. i tell them about our rich history, and about the help anyone say hi to everyone attitude and determined spirit of the people who live here. I'd tell them about cromers, pasties, fudge, maple syrup, and sisu. And once I've told them about all those things, I'd put them in a car, head north, and show them the Porcupine Mountains. If you're not really familiar with the place, the, the Porcupine Mountains was designated a state park because of a, a group of spirited citizens who really felt it was important to preserve the, the last large track of forest area in the upper Midwest that hadn't been logged. So we've got 35,000 acres of old growth northern hardwoods. You get the big white pines out there, you got the hemlocks, you got a nice mix of hardwood trees. You can find big, you know, big old red oaks out there, big sugar maples, big yellow birches, and the forest cover out there is really beautiful. We constantly hear from visitors that, that they just didn't realize there was anything like this in the Midwest. Porcupine Mountains Wilderness State Park is Michigan's largest at roughly 60,000 acres. It was established in 1945 to protect the area's large stand of old growth forest. In 1972, Michigan passed the Wilderness and Natural Areas Act. This gave the park the new designation of the Porcupine Mountains Wilderness State Park. The park's lakes, rivers and streams, Lake Superior shoreline, waterfalls of all sizes and remarkable vistas make it one of the most unique destinations in the entire Midwest. The facilities provided by the park include an extensive network of backcountry trails for hiking and wilderness backpacking, rustic trailside cabins, modern campgrounds, swimming and boating areas, and various interpretive programs led by park rangers. Any trip to the Porky should start out at the Visitor Center, located just a few miles west of Silver City along the South Boundary Road. The Porcupine Mountains, we've got over 90 miles of hiking trails. There are fantastic views. There's a lot of different hiking opportunity. You can hike on trails like the Escarpment Trail. So you've got big panoramic views. Uh, you know, you're on top of a three, 400 foot uh, escarpment with a sheer drop right alongside you. But yeah, we've got other trails that maybe you can hike along a, a small quiet stream. You know, the Union Mine Interpretive Trail is a great one. Lots of little waterfalls and water slides. Or the Little Carp River Trail um, off the Little Carp River Road is another great one. You can hike along the Presque Isle River, you know, the beautiful Presque Isle. It's a, a nationally recognized wild and scenic river. Got waterfalls. It's surrounded by old growth forest. It's a, just a fantastic place to hike. You got the East and West River trails there to hike. You can hike into some of the lakes in the park, you know, take the hike from uh, Lake of the Clouds and go all the way down to the actual lake itself at Lake of the Clouds. Got a nice little uh, hill that you go down there and then you got to climb on your way back out or about two and a half miles if you want to hike in and see Muir Lake or, you know, Lily Pond, some of those other more remote areas in the park. And, and a lot of the trails also uh, will take into the old growth of the park. We uh, often forget that, you know, that's why this place is actually a state park is uh, to protect this large uh, example of a northern 
hardwoods old growth forest that we have. We've got about 35,000 acres of this old growth forest. And it's, it's considered the largest example of an old growth northern hardwood forest and it's also considered one of the best examples of an old growth hardwood forest uh, in the region. So it's a great place to get out and hike amongst some of the giant trees and get some of the great scenery in there as well. <music> Tons of day hiking opportunities here, yeah, depending on how far you want to go. There's some great, uh, you know, 12 mile loops that you can do and other people just, uh, you know, maybe they'll tackle some of the longer linear trails, you know, maybe they'll walk five miles down, turn around and walk five miles back and, and obviously some of the premier hiking are the, the is the, the trail uh, along uh, Lake of the Clouds area, the Escarpment Trail and then also on the other side would be the Big Carp River Trail. Some of those, the views up there are just phenomenal. Phenomenal indeed. short walk up the wooden walkway will deliver you to the escarpment and some of the most spectacular views in the park. The escarpment parallels Lake Superior and is a continuation of the same copper bearing bedrock found on the Keweenaw Peninsula. This massive outcropping overlooks the Carp River Valley and the most popular attraction in the park, Lake of the Clouds. A second ridge farther inland includes Summit Peak. At about a half mile, the hike to the top of Summit Peak is well worth the trip. Summit Peak is the highest point in the park at 1,958 feet above sea level. As you near the summit, a viewing platform provides spectacular views of the vast wilderness of the Upper Peninsula. You can add another 40 feet by climbing the viewing tower located at the summit. The Porkies were the site of mining in the 19th century Throughout the park, remnants of this bygone era can still be found. A short walk in from the south boundary road, you'll find the historic Nunsuch Mine, which operated on and off from 1867 to 1912. The area was given its name when a vein of copper was discovered in the Little Iron River in 1865. The copper was found in sandstone, and it was said that none such ore existed anywhere else in the copper country. There you'll also find none such falls. None such falls is one of the many waterfalls both big and small found throughout the park. Some of the most spectacular waterfalls can be found on the Presque Isle River at the western edge of the park. hike along the well-maintained walkways on the banks of the Presque Isle is sure not to disappoint. The waterfalls of the Presque Isle are the largest in the park and the second largest in the state.
we've got 17 different rustic cabins in the park. They're spread throughout the park. They, uh, they range in size from a two bunk, which uh, accommodates two people, all the way up in size to an eight bunk cabin. And some of these cabins are, uh, are, are, are are pretty old. Some of them have got a lot of tradition associated with them. In fact, the, uh, the Mirror Lake 8 Bunk Cabin out on Mirror Lake is, um, is the oldest park-built cabin. That cabin was built in 1945 in the very early, early years when the, the park was actually established. So there's lots of different camping options here. You can go stay in a cabin. We've got backcountry camping. We've got modern camping. We've got rustic campsites. We've got four different yurts in the park. Lots of, uh, lots of different options. We even have a modern lodge, which uh, sleeps uh, 12 people. It even comes with uh, linen service, and uh, it's got uh, you know, w washing machines and everything. It's fully equipped. So there's uh, from full range, no matter how rustic you want to be or don't want to be, we can accommodate. Most of the cabins require a hike, anywhere from a one to four mile hike in. The one exception is, uh, is our Gichigumi cabin, which is uh, right along the shore of Lake Superior, and that's one that you can drive into. All the rest of them you do have to hike into, and four miles being about the furthest hike you'd have to go this time of year. That, that changes in the winter, because some of the cabins are open in the winter, and, uh, and as are all four of our yurts are, are all open in the winter, and some of them can be a little bit further to get to, a little bit more of an adventure in the winter. The closest cabins would be, well, Gichigumi, the one that you can actually drive up to. And then there's a few others that are within a mile walking distance. Uh, Whitetail Cabin is a pretty popular one right on the shore of Lake Superior. Union River Cabin right on the Union River. Both of those are about a mile hike to get into. If you want a small little, a, a quaint little cabin, uh, our, our White Birch Cabin is also an easy little hike in kind of a nice secluded location on the eastern end of the park. These are rustic cabins, so they, uh, we, we do equip them with pots and pans. There's plates, silverware, bowls, cups. There's even an old-fashioned old you know, percolator-style coffee maker in there. But you need to provide any, any consumable items. So you need to you know, bring your toilet paper with you. You need to provide lighting. There's a wood stove inside the cabin, but we don't recommend trying to cook on that because in the summertime, it'd just be too hot in the cabin. So bring a little backpacker-style camp stove with you. Bring something to uh, treat or filter the water that you're going to going to be uh, you know collecting from you know nearby water sources there's there's not water pumps at these cabins so you have to treat surface water so either boil it or filter it properly the cabins all have outhouses so all of our rustic cabins cost $65 a night doesn't matter how many bunks that it has and, and the yurts are the same price as well and you can uh, you can make reservations for those as much as six months in advance from when you want to come visit the park and you can make reservations right from our webpage go to michigan.gov slash porkies and click on the tab that says make a reservation and uh, yeah get your reservation in because these cabins are pretty popular when you get back into some of these cabins, there's a, there's a lot of solitude out there. You're, you're pretty far from any roads and you know any population centers. And I think that's what uh, appeals to a lot of the people that come out here. It, yeah, we've only got the two roads in the park, South Boundary Road on the southern perimeter of the park, and then 107 that goes up to Lake of the Clouds. So when you're a place like Mirror Lake, you know you are more than two, three miles from the nearest road. So it's, it's pretty quiet, it's pretty peaceful out there. And I, I think probably the thing that really seems to appeal to a lot of people nowadays in these busy, hectic lives Lives that we have is just you know how, how it's a step back to a little simpler time you know you, you make some firewood and you know you kind of procure the stuff and you go out and you do your activities for the day and yeah, it's a it's a pretty special spot I think you're gonna really uh, really enjoy it if you get a chance to get out and experience some of these cabins one thing real appealing about the cabins is is their location and, and the ability to use a cabin like like a base camp so you can hike all your, uh, your gear into your cabin, you know, stay for a few days, and then get out and hike some of the trails in the park. So we've got 90 miles of hiking trails in the park, so it's a big place. The park's 60,000 acres in size, and it's pretty hard to experience all of that you know, at one time, but staying in a cabin or, you know, or a backcountry campsite really gives you that, that ability to, to really explore the backcountry of the park. So for example, like if you're staying at Mirror Lake, a, a great hike to do is you can, uh, you can hike down the correction line you know, down to the Big Carp River Trail. And, uh, and if you've not ever seen that trail that parallels the Big Carp River, it's got a lot of waterfalls on there. It's a great fishing river. And if you're, you're really adventurous, maybe you'll want to hike as far as Shining Cloud Falls, which is, uh, which is definitely one of the premier uh, interior waterfalls that we have in the park. So there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of great uh, hiking opportunity, fishing opportunity, a lot of just great recreation opportunity here. Some of our cabins are open all year round. All four of our yurts are open year round. And then the remaining cabins are open seasonally. And that season, especially in the spring, kind of fluctuates, you know, from the time when South Boundary Road melts back and gets opened up. Usually around the beginning of May is the earliest that you can, uh, you can check in and, and make a reservation for one of these cabins up until the end of deer season. So they're open through the end of November.
when you're staying in the cabins, you know, the, the, the protocol is that you, you clean up after yourself. So leave the place either as clean or cleaner than what you find it. So that means packing out, you know, all the garbage and stuff that you brought. And if you find stuff along the way, boy, it, it sure goes a long way if everybody picks up a little piece of garbage here and there. It really helps keep this park nice and clean. So we got a lot of backpackers in the park. We've got 90 miles of hiking trails through the park. And if you camp at one of the established backcountry campsites in the park, the, uh, the campsites are equipped with a metal fire ring, so you can have a, a ground fire there. If you're camping off-site, um, no fires allowed. So fires only in the designated metal fire rings. And then if you're backcountry camping also at one of those designated sites, then there's going to be a bear pole that you can uh, secure all your scented items in. So your food, you know, if you bring toothpaste, things like that. Make sure all that goes in a, in a special bag and that you hoist it up into one of these bear poles in the evening hours and overnight. So some of the cabins in the park are, are on inland lakes. So we've got our Lake of the Clouds cabin. So on our map, we've got Lake of the Clouds here. Right on Lake of the Clouds, there's a cabin nestled on Lake of the Clouds. We've got three cabins that are on Mirror Lake and one cabin that's on Lily Pond. All of those cabins all come equipped with a, either a boat and or a canoe so that you can get out and you can fish those lakes that, uh, that you're standing right out, you know, you're camping right in front of. The, the cabins are uh, equipped with the, uh, the appropriate uh, PFDs and, and paddles and or oars. So if one of these cabins is something that's of interest to you, you can always go online to make a reservation. The, the cabins do require a reservation for most, most part of the year. So go to uh, either go to the Porcupine Mountains uh, webpage um, or you can call the park with specific questions. 1-800-44-PARKS to make a reservation. You can hike into some of these cabins in the, in the fall if you want to, you know, try your hand at deer hunting here in the park. It, uh, it definitely is a, a unique opportunity for a lot of people because they know they're going to get a certain experience. They're coming more to find solitude. So if you want to come, you know, hike and do some fishing too, uh, a couple of great places to go would be uh, like Mirror Lake. You can either backcountry camp on, on Mirror Lake or you can go in and rent one of the three cabins that are on Mirror Lake. What's nice about the cabins here in the park is if you get one of the cabins that's on one of the lakes, then that cabin will come equipped with a boat, which, you know, helps to, makes it a lot easier to fish the lake. There's a lot of different fishing opportunities in the parks and, and in some cases there are some special regulations that you need to know about. For example, Lake of the Clouds, uh, no live bait allowed on Lake of the Clouds, uh, so it's uh, artificial lures only. And that lake is, is loaded with smallmouth bass, uh, but it is catch and release only on the smallmouth bass. If you catch panfish, you can, you can keep the panfish in Lake of the Clouds. Whereas Mirror Lake, Mirror Lake's a trout lake, it's deeper and it's, uh, it's got lots of trout in there. So that one just falls under the typical Michigan uh, regulations for, uh, for a trout lake. Then there's lots of trout streams in the park that's all got a lot of the native brook trout in them. We've got uh, several rivers in the park that get salmon or steelhead runs in them in the spring and or fall. And, uh, and plus a lot of people in the park will fish offshore, you know, just fish the big water, Lake Superior, the shore of Lake Superior from the, the rocky shores and catch anything from lake trout to steelhead. And oh, I'm sure some people probably catch some white fish and, and various other fish, coho. A lot of fishing opportunity here. Taking a vacation simply means time away from normal day-to-day -day activities. And it's a lot more about where you go than how far you travel to get there. Whether it's a one-day sightseeing adventure or a week-long excursion, the Porcupine Mountains Wilderness State Park is a great destination to keep on your list for any time of year. Looking through the different seasons are, is, is a great way to see the park. You know, the spring, um, especially uh, you know, before all the, the vegetation starts to green up in the forest is a really neat time to be uh, out there. You can see some of the early spring flowers, the spring ephemerals. Then, uh, you know, when the leaves start to pop, that tends to coincide with maybe when some of the, the biting insects start to come out. But the rivers tend to be high that time of year. Um, the trails do tend to be a little bit muddy, so just, uh, you know, wear appropriate footwear. In the summertime, that's when our trails tend to be the driest, uh, but probably also the most heavily used. So if you're coming in the summer, especially if you're around any of the busy holidays, weekends um, you know you're gonna have to work hard to get some solitude in the park but you'll be able to find it you know hike some of the more remote areas uh, you know maybe like the area around uh, Lost Lake is a great area to go if you're looking to uh, stay you know avoid the crowds and then when you get here in the fall obviously the weather starts cooling off trails get a little bit more wet again but then you get the fall color and you, you know you get some of the just the you know really great views take a drive hike or drive and hike a fall color tour is a very simple but very rewarding way to spend some time in the Porkies Hiking in those three seasons definitely uh, are interesting and, and winter's not out of the question. 
it just gets to be a little bit more difficult. You know, you, you, you do need snowshoes uh, and, and you can uh, expect to find much more limited access to a lot of the interior of the park. But if you're a, uh, the real hardy soul and you really want to venture out there, there's some really great scenes to, uh, to experience in the winter time when hiking around here. Spend some time hiking. Take a five minute walk to the escarpment for a look at one of the greatest wonders of the Upper Peninsula. Pick a trail and spend a day hiking and checking out some of the park's spectacular scenery. If you're up for more adventure, pick a route on any of the park's 90 miles of connecting trails. Add in some backcountry camping and spend a couple of days or a week exploring the park. If a tent just isn't up your alley, rent a cabin or a yurt for a couple of days. Do some fishing on a remote UP lake. At the end of the day, cook what you catch over a crackling fire. Whatever your quest for adventure, short or long, simple or hardcore, there's a pretty good chance you'll find what you're looking for right here in the Porkies, right here in our own backyard. That's it for this week. Be sure to check out 906outdoors.com where you'll find the 906 fishing report, TV6 weather, shopping, and more. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.